So, I know I don't typically watch NXT on Wednesday nights. And for good reason. Because it's a crappy product. Let's just keep it clear here. That said, every couple of months, I decide I'm going to watch an NXT TakeOver to see what's going on. To see if anything's gotten better or anything's improved or anything even remotely interesting is happening. Um, and then usually I get a strong reminder as to why I don't watch this crappy, crappy product and feel good about that decision and then come back in a couple of months and begin the whole exercise all over again. So I was in there Sunday night, nothing else to do. I'm like, I got a few hours to kill. Let me go ahead and watch NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. Oh, if the vengeance was against entertaining the fans, then boy, did you guys deliver probably up until the end of the show. Yeah, like you look, it is just, it's a lot of the same typical crap that I would expect from this dumb NXT show. It's the same type of crap I've seen them do time after time after time that the hardest of hardcore fans absolutely love that doesn't move the needle in any way, shape, or form and is a representation of just about everything that is wrong with professional wrestling today. Like you look at the opening match, for example. This women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals match. Cool, okay. It's Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez and Ember Moon and Shitsy Blackheart. Fine. The first few minutes of the match, I'm thinking, okay, they might be actually working more of a traditional type of tag match. They might actually try to get some heat on somebody. They might actually be bothered to try and tell a story, work some clear-cut heel baby face dynamics, you know, those things that actually work, that actually get the talents over, that actually make matches a lot better. In the first few minutes, it sure seemed like uh, we were getting that. But then I had to remember this is NXT, so you had to know eventually that we were going to get to the everyone has to get their shit in part of the program in this match, and you certainly did. Here's what I don't understand. The way it was being presented, it sure seemed like Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez were being presented as heel-like here. And if I'm wrong, I'm totally wrong. But it seems like others had this similar type of impression. So why the fuck are we trying to get heat on them to build up to a hot tag for Raquel Gonzalez? That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Like, they should be the ones, if anything, that's doing the cheating and you... And don't even get me started. Why are we doing that? And in this match was sloppy as shit. If you can't do spots clean and crisp and fluidly, then you don't do them. I understand that in some ways this is still a developmental brand. I understand this is not the true major leagues. It is a major league version of the minor leagues. It's like a triple A show. Not triple A wrestling. I'm talking about triple A relation to major league baseball. But goddamn, like it was choppy and it was sloppy. It was bad. And it descended into a clusterfuck. And here's what I don't understand. You get to the end of the match. And Dakota Kai now can help Raquel Gonzalez get the pin. Like earlier on, we were making a big deal during the match about Dakota Kai getting involved. And now all of a sudden she's allowed to help out on the pinfall? It makes no fucking sense. Shitsy Blackheart sucks. Just because she colors her hair and wears a tank. Okay, that's it. What else she got? Nothing. Ember Moon's been a massive disappointment. And I can see exactly why the hell she's back in NXT. Because she has no business being on a main roster. Dakota Kai is just, I'm ambivalent, like, indifferent to. I don't see what the appeal is there. At least Raquel Gonzalez, I can see the appeal. I can see the attraction. I can see why she might have some talent. Now, of course, some of you will go to the comments and point out the other three that I just crapped on actually having talent. But, of course, you're fucking wrong, like you usually are. Um, but I was really hoping they wouldn't involve Raquel Gonzalez in this type of garbage. Like, she's good. The rest of them, I could do without. And this match ended up being garbage. And so did the next one. No big surprise to me. NXT North American Championship. Kushida and Johnny Gargano. Like, just like all the championship matches on this show, for the most part, they were one gigantic waste of time. And if this was the first time I had ever been exposed to Kushida and Johnny Gargano after seeing people pump these guys up for months and years, talking about how great they were, I would come away from watching this match and want to dick kick and cunt kick every single one of you that ever pumped these two clowns up. Gargano is garbage. 
especially if you don't have the fans there trying to artificially manufacture babyface talent that he doesn't have. As a heel, he sucks. He flat out sucks. The way, the way to what? What the hell are they the way to? Thank you, Dexter Loomis, by the way, for taking Austin Theory the fuck out of the picture. Well, this match, you know, eventually, as always, you descended into the everybody's got to get the crap in, but there wasn't nearly as much of that. But that's part of the problem is guys like Kushida and Johnny Gargano, they only know how to work that shit. And you guys are going to tell me differently in the comments, and you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. They don't know how to do anything other than the crash test dummy crap. So when they do something like this where they're trying to do more of a technical exhibition, they don't know what the hell they're doing, and it looks like crap. And Gargano wins, so what the hell was the point with all of this? Like, it was so surprising to me that when we got to the men's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals with MSK and Grizzled Young Veterans, like, I was cool with it. You know, it certainly descended into a no-selling no spot fest, which is exactly what you would expect. But the first two matches were so bad that it was cool. It was a breath of fresh air. See, sometimes the spot matches aren't a bad thing if they're balanced out by other things. In this case, unfortunately, they were balanced out by two really boring, really crappily put together matches. But nonetheless, uh, MSK, I think their name is stupid. It sounds too much like MS-13 or something else like that. But are they must-see kids? You know, they're cool. Like, they could, they could do some shit. I personally would prefer they be on a Raw or a SmackDown, so that way they don't kind of get lost in the shuffle of the abyss that is NXT. Um, but, you know, both of these teams, frankly, were kind of impressive. Although you get those moments where, you know, like you have the one, the one spot where, you know, Dez, what the fuck is his name now? It doesn't even matter to me. But they do the one, like, doomsday device. The Grizzly Young Veterans do the doomsday device coming through a suicide dive in the middle ropes, and Dez goes, like, it looks sick. And that should be a big-time effing deal. Instead, it's just a move, and we got to go cycle through the next round of bullshit. Like, these guys and gals in today's wrestling can do some truly incredible, wonderful moves, especially when they perform them crisply. Imagine if these moves actually had purpose and consequence and meaning and significance behind them, instead of being the spot monkey, I don't know how to fucking actually really work bullshit that we get today. And even when I look at this match here, like you have this one sequence where both of the members of MSK do this and do these great high flying moves off the top, and wasn't it does whatever the fuck his name is now? I don't care. Um, he does this spiral tap or spinal tap, whatever the hell you want to call it, off of the top rope. Like that should have been the end of the match, but of course it's not. We got to kick out and do five more minutes of bullshit just to do a lamer finish, and the same team still freaking wins. Like, at least the right team won. That's cool. Like, these guys have something. And this was by far, to me, the best match of the night. Not even close. And it actually worked because you didn't have every match on the card feeling and looking the exact same. So, a lot of people are hyped up for MSK. You know, I get a little bit of the hype, but in some ways, you know, they're just like every other team. Sometimes slow the hell down a little bit. A little bit less would go a hell of a lot more. That's all I'm saying. Uh, this whole thing about Cameron Grimes being rich now. Like if you're trying to tie it into recent events that happens, that's cool, that's great, that's fantastic. Try to do something that is relevant. Um, but when he was Trevor Lee in Impact, he sucked. He still sucks. I see people praising him. I thought he was racist, so you guys didn't like him. Like, I'm confused now, like, who we're supposed to hate and who we're supposed to like and everything like that. But, yeah, I don't see what the particular appeal is here. I don't see where there's talent. Some of you do, but, you know, again, you guys think Johnny Gargano and Kushida are great. And, man, after watching last night, I can tell you just how freaking wrong you really are. Uh, the NXT Women's Championship Triple Threat. <laughs> I was trying to figure out kind of what Tony Storm's gimmick was supposed to be. Like some of you were talking about like it's a punk rock thing. It's saw Shawn Michaels 93 to 95. Some of you just said that she has a big old fat ass, which might be the gimmick. And that's cool. I saw a lingerie football player personally who forgot to put on the other piece of eye black. Um, but the table said, fuck her spot. <laughs> Randy Orton is pissed. He's like, why can't I ever get a gimmick table like that? Give me a break. 
But this match was really short. Like, you'd be expecting this match to go quite a bit longer than it actually did. And then you get to the very end, and I'm sitting there, what the hell is the ref doing? Like, I know you're waiting for Io Shirai to come in and do her dumb crap, so that way she can pin Mercedes Martinez. Of course, we're going to pin the wrong person in this match, because that's what happens when you have idiots in charge, and idiots putting together these matches, and you had a show full of idiotically put-together matches. But the ref's just standing there as you're literally having a pinfall attempt, waiting for the spot. Like, you can't make a slow move. Like, I understand this is a... A training ground for the refs, so you got to be better. But that's a pretty big miss. It's a pretty bad miss. It was a pretty awkward miss. Had me going, what the fuck was going on? But in reality, like, you got a little bit of comedy here with the table just collapsing under under Tony Storm's fat ass. Just incidental contact, knocked it down with her fat ass. Um, but does Massey really go long enough to really matter? Like, of course, they were able to rebound after the table spot didn't happen and Neil Shirai goes jumping off. Well... Again, that's the only thing these kids, girls, men know how to fucking do anymore. So at least they were able to figure it out. But it looks like I give them too much credit for that. But I was really surprised. Like, you thought this match was going to go quite a bit longer than it did. And apparently, uh, after the show, Triple H referenced that this match had up to 20 minutes. Well, then why the hell did they use it? That's what I couldn't figure out. Which brings me to the main event. Which, as soon as I realized this was the main event, I instantly regretted my decision to watch this show. And it has nothing to do with Finn Balor. I've said my piece on Finn Balor over the years. But in this spot where I don't ever have to fucking watch him, I don't mind him as much. It's the loser weight, Pete Dunne. What in the hell is the appeal here? Seriously. What is the appeal for this flea market Taz with the dollar store spray tan? Oh, look. I'm going to work your fingers. I'm going to... Snap your fingers. I'm going to do, guess what? Snap your fingers. We're going to do more joint manipulation, which leads to snapping back your fingers. And guess, guess what? Snap your fingers, and then I'm going to work your fingers some more. What a fucking putz. You guys think this is good? These are the types of guys and wrestlers that you geek out for nowadays? The hell is wrong with you? Flea Market Taz with a dollar store spray tan, trying to do the weakest ass, wackest ass impression of Billy Robinson imaginable. He stinks. He looks stupid like even when he does this stupid thing, it reminds me of freaking Belushi in Animal House. Guess what I am? What's that? <laughs> a zit. I guess what he is, a zit, a pimple on the ass of NXT. And I can't believe he got a main event shot here. But again... This match, just like all the other title matches, were wastes of time. People are going to talk about, well, this match told stories in this match. I didn't do shit. Shut up. Finn Balor just coming back, correct me if I'm wrong here, from a jaw injury. So Pete Dunne's going to work fingers over and over and over again. Like even at one point in time when he went after the shoulder, that's been surgically repaired. Instead of continuously working that and truly identifying the weak spot, we went to the fucking fingers because we're Pete Dunne, we're the loser weight, we don't know what the hell we're doing. Really? That psychology, that storytelling, that's stupid. And what I really don't understand is, why go through the whole premise of this match just to sit there and have the loser weight get pinned just to immediately after the match have his dudes come out and attack Finn Balor anyways. Oh, those are NXT tag champions? You have those? When's the last time they freaking defended their belts? Seriously. Why the hell do they have those belts? Get them off of them and put them on MSK as quickly as possible. And then here comes the Undisputed Era. And I said, oh, God. Maybe at least something will happen here. But you've got more lame-ass vanilla midgets running out. But it, something did happen. To be fair... You could have chopped 10 minutes off of the main event of this match, not had a decisive finish, and just done this finish, and it would have been a whole hell of a lot better in my opinion. You got the big turn by Adam Cole. He's fucking kicking Kyle O'Reilly after they've come in and helped Finn Balor. He's super kicking Finn Balor. He's super kicking Kyle O'Reilly. Like, that's something. Like, that's at least a little remotely interesting. The most interesting thing, ironically enough, that Undisputed Era has ever... <laughs> Ever done is their potential breakup story, which is about as perfectly as you could describe the whole Undisputed Era reign of terror over NXT. 
But that finish was good. Like that finish is a cliffhanger. That finish leaves you wanting to see potentially what's going to happen next. You've seen something different, a shift in a character. Like, that was well done. Why can't we get more of that crap on NXT? Now granted, you can say this Undisputed Era turn by Adam Cole was long overdue. Breaking up this group was long overdue. And it surely was. But goddamn, in a show full of a lot of crap, like this stood out. This was something. This was really well done. This was a good finish that clouded the judgments of a lot of people from what was frankly a really, really crappy show, period. And that happens sometimes. But it doesn't change the fact that most of the two and a half hours preceding this was garbage. Hot, stinking garbage. And they don't get better. They only get worse and the talents get worse. And I just wish at some point in time these hardest of hardcore fans would wake up and realize that the type of stupid wrestling that appeals to you isn't drawing more people in, is drawing even more fans away. And it, it's just lame as hell. Like it's lazy wrestling. And you would say, how dare you call it lazy wrestling with all the spots that they do. It is lazy wrestling because instead of really structuring well put together, well thought out, well mapped out matches that tell stories that actually incorporate real psychology, it's lazy to just sit there and go young bucks your fucking way through a 10 or 15 minute match. Anybody can do that. Like literally just about anybody in wrestling now can do that. That is lazy. It's total laziness. Like the only thing that really truly wasn't lazy on this show was the post-match stuff with Adam Cole turning on Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly. That, that was well done. Could have just given us that for the show and said that's it and skipped everything else because everything else was a gigantic waste of time. Don't kid yourself. And you know deep down that this takeover sucked.